Good morning, church. No matter what happens in our nation, we are so privileged that we can come to the feet of the Lord and we can look to Him. You know, today, uh, as many of you may know, we are not holding services here in Nara and Peter. But it's such a joy that through social media, through our TV and different other TV networks, we are able to gather and we're able to worship God together. So I want to welcome everyone who is joining us from across Sri Lanka and across the world. Today is the day that the Lord is going to touch us and going to release us. He's going to do a mighty work in us. But I want you to take a moment to just prepare your hearts with me to get into that right place to hear from God today. Let us pray together. Father, we just thank you that no matter what is going on in our world, Lord, that we can come to you. Lord, that you have a specific plan and a purpose for each of us today, Lord. Lord, I pray even as we worship you, Lord, that you would, Lord, come into each of our homes and that your spirit will light a fire in us, Lord. Lord, that it will refresh us and restore us, Lord. It will remove fears, anxieties, and worries as we release ourselves to you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's just continue to remain in an attitude of prayer and join the worship team. The words will be on the screen. I would encourage you not to just sit back and watch the team worship, but to truly engage and be part of worshiping God this day. You dance over me while I am unaware. You sing all around, but I never hear the sound. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. And how you love me. Yes, Jesus.
Yes, we praise your name. We praise your name. Praise forever to the King of Kings. We glorify your name. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. We thank you, Lord, that we are restored because of you. We thank you that we have hope because of you. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Friends, as we continue to worship God, it is our privilege to gather here at this table to remember the sacrifice that was made on that cross. And even as we get ready to partake in communion, I'd ask you to turn in your Bibles with me and read this passage. It's found in the book of Corinthians. And it says this, For I pass on to you what I receive from the Lord himself. On the night he was betrayed, the Lord took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that your body was broken that we may be made whole. We thank you, Father, for sending your Son that we may be restored to you, Lord. Lord, even as we partake, let us remember, let us celebrate, let us rejoice in knowing that in every part of our lives we have been restored, we have been made whole because of this sacrifice. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's partake together. As we continue reading in Corinthians, it says this. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Father, we thank you for sending your son Jesus, for the blood that was shed, for the relationship that was restored, Lord. Lord, our sins are forgiven today because of the sacrifice Jesus made on that cross. We thank you. We receive it. We celebrate it today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Would you just raise your hands with me to heaven? Let us declare God's victory over sin, over death. Let's declare his victory over this nation. Will you join me and take a couple of moments to just pray and cry out to the Lord on behalf of our nation? You know, in this week we have seen fear increase. We have seen turmoil in the hearts of many people increase. We have seen the number of positive patients increase. Let us take all of that and just release it to God. Father, we just cry out to you, Lord. As your people, we cry out to you on behalf of this nation. Father, you see, Lord, uh, all the despair and the worry and the fear, Father. Lord, you see the lack of resources, Lord. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Lord, you will be with all the frontline workers, Lord. Lord, the doctors, the nurses, the other staff, Lord, in the different centers, Lord, that you would strengthen them, Lord, as they work tirelessly, Lord. Lord, I pray for every person who is in those facilities. Lord, you know not everyone has what they need, Lord, to be in that place, Lord. But I pray, Father, that you will be their provider. That you will give them peace of mind, Father. Lord, that you would touch their bodies, Father. That your healing virtue will flow in these places, Lord. Lord, that hope will spring up, Lord. Lord, I pray for every home, Lord. I pray for every person who is crying out to you, Lord, that they would find peace in you, Jesus. Father, we lift up Sri Lanka before you, Lord, because we know, Lord, in times where we do not have answers, we can always come to you. Lord, we trust that you will do amazingly beyond whatever we can expect or imagine, Father, at this time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Are you ready for God's word today? Are you ready to let the Lord 
impact your life. Even as Pastor Dishan comes to share God's word with us today, I'm going to ask Angie to come and minister to us in song. And I don't want you just to enjoy the words of the song, but I want you to truly reflect and join in in your heart in worship, in preparing yourself to hear God's word. I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your sight. So you made a way across the great divide left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside and there at the cross you paid the debt i owe broke my chains freed my soul for the first time i had hoped For the blood applied Thank you, Jesus It has washed me white Thank you, Jesus You have saved my life Brought me from the darkness Into glorious light took my place laid inside my tomb of sin you were buried for three days but then you walked right out again and now death has no sting and life it has no end for I have been transformed by the blood was 
the blood applied. Glory to His name. Today I would like to talk to you about something that I have titled, It is Time. It is time. You know, as the Lord has directed us to obey His call in 2021, I feel that we haven't given proper emphasis to one of the main ingredients in fulfilling God's call. And therefore, I really felt that uh, God was calling us to a 21-day solemn assembly. As I feel prompted by the Holy Spirit to stop and gather together everybody in prayer. And I'm gathering you together also, those of you listening on uh, television and online. You know, it is time. It is time to pray. Our country is going through a very tough time. As people have continued to put their trust in man and not in God. Our world is being dominated by COVID-19. Where fear and uncertainty rules. Uh, look at the church of Jesus Christ. The church of Jesus Christ is facing deception in unprecedented terms. And the signs of the end are becoming very evident. You know, as we gather together in this 21-day solemn assembly, we will start to search our own hearts and seek God's purity and holiness in our own attitudes and our behavior and even in our thinking. During times of crisis, you know, God's people gathered in solemn assembly for a special time of prayer and fasting. Uh, the prophet Joel called the people of Israel at that time to uh, a, a solemn assembly when a devastating plague of locust, uh, it brought drought and famine uh, to the whole of Israel. Let's read Joel 1.14. Joel 1.14. Announce a time of fasting. Call the people together for a solemn assembly. Bring the leaders and all the people of the land into the temple of the Lord your God and cry out to him there. Let's pray together. Father, bless your word. Lord, take your word and apply it to all our lives and help us to change according to your word. Let Dishan decrease. Let the Holy Spirit increase. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You see, this is the time for you, for me, for our church family to sincerely come together and to cry out to God for ourselves, our church, our nation, and our world. In Joel 2.15, Joel 2.15, it says this, Blow the ram's horn in Jerusalem. Announce a time of fasting. Call the people together for a solemn assembly. I hope and pray that you will put aside your general plans and make this solemn assembly a priority in these 21 days. From the 3rd of May, starting tomorrow, till the 23rd, 21 days of solemn assembly. You know, let's pray and let's hear God speak to us first through his word. Uh, you know, during this time as we cooperately together, we, 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 we do a soul searching and a self-examination. You know, uh, we can come together. Let's also repent. Let's confess our sins. Let's fast and pray together and see the favor of God in a mighty way. You know, that's what we want to do. And we want you to join with us together. You see, the first thing I want to tell you is it is time to fast and pray. It is time to fast and pray. The theme of these 21 days of solemn assembly will be it is time. It is time to seek the Lord. It is time to fast. It is time to pray. Why? So we may hear from him. I want to tell you there are so many questions, so many unanswered things. People don't know what's happening from day to day. We don't know how to make decisions. So what do we do? We need to hear from him. If you need a breakthrough, even in your life, you know, not just for the country, the nation, I mean the country, the world, and, and, and the church, but if you need a breakthrough in your life, 
in your marriage, in your finances, with your children, uh, maybe it's a, because of a sickness, in something that has been a nagging pain. It's time to fast and pray. Why pray? Why pray? Have you noticed that Jesus launched the church, the Christian church, not while somebody was preaching, not while somebody was singing, but while people were praying. In the first two chapters of Acts, the disciples were doing nothing but waiting on God. They were just sitting there, worshipping, communion with God, and letting God shape them and cleanse their spirits and do those heart operations that only the Holy Spirit can do on the inside. What happened during that time of them waiting on the Lord and praying and seeking Him? The church was born and the Holy Spirit was poured out. You know, what does it say about our churches today? God birthed the church in a prayer meeting and today prayer meetings are almost extinct in churches. You know, I am sure that the Roman emperors, they didn't have um, prayer to God or didn't honor God in any way during those times either, right? But then the early Christians didn't seem to care what emperors Caligula or Nero Claudius did. They were not bothered about that. How could any emperor stop God? How could the demons of hell make headway when God's people prayed and called upon his name. It is impossible for them to succeed. You see, in the New Testament, we don't see the apostles, Peter and John, you know, wringing their hands, scratching their head, you know, and saying, oh, what are we going to do? Caligula is a bisexual. He wants to appoint his horse to the Roman Senate. Oh, what a terrible model of leadership. You know, how are we going to respond to this outrage? My friend, I want to tell you, let's not play games. Let's not divert attention away from our weak prayer lives, me included. You see, in Acts 4, when the apostles were unjustly arrested, they were imprisoned and threatened. They didn't call for a protest or a march or to go to the town hall and, and, and do some kind of uh, pr protest in a big way. No, they didn't reach even for some political leverage. No, instead, what did they do? They headed to a prayer meeting. Soon, the place was vibrating with the power of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 4, verses 23, 24, and verse 31, says this. As soon as they were freed, Peter and John found the other believers and told them what the leading priest and elders had said. Then all the believers were united as they lifted their voices in prayer. Verse 31. After this prayer, the building where they were meeting shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they preached God's message with boldness. You see, the apostles had this instinct. It was in them. When in trouble, pray. When intimidated, pray. When challenged, pray. When persecuted, pray. My friend, prayer is the greatest need of our times. There's nothing greater than prayer. You know, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, Paul says to Timothy, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Why? Why, first of all, before anything else? Well, Paul is saying, Timothy, my son, we've got to remember that God's house is to be called a house of prayer. You see, later on in that same chapter, 1 Timothy 2, 8, it says, in every place of worship, I want men to pray with holy hands, lifted up to God, free from anger and controversy. That is the sign of a true Christian church. You know, there's another thing I'd like to show you here. In Revelation, 
Revelation 5.8. Revelation 5.8 it says, And when he took the scroll, the four living beings and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp and they held gold bowls filled with incense. Right? Now this was going on in worship, non-stop. Right? These elders... They, they had these bowls, gold bowls, and inside of them there was incense. They were filled with. And, and this is how they were worshipping. And do you know, my friend, what was inside of those bowls? What is this as incense that is so fragrant to Christ? Let me read the whole thing. It says, each one had a harp and they had gold bowls filled with incense. What was the incense? The prayers of God's people. The prayers of God's people. Your prayers were held in that bowl forever. Just imagine. You and I kneel or stand or sit down to pray. Opening our hearts to God. And what we say is so precious to him that he keeps it like a treasure forever. Sometimes we forget what we prayed. But God doesn't. You see the Bible the Bible promises you, promises us, if we would only pray, if we would only pray, Matthew 7, 7, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. You know, that's a promise to you. When you pray, when you ask, and then in Jeremiah 29, 13, Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. You will find me. James 4, 2 says, You don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. You don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. So isn't it time to say, stop. We're going to pray. Stop everything else. Because God said that when we pray, He will intervene. He will intervene. The next thing I want to look at is, why fast? Why should we fast? Fasting is a spiritual discipline. So we can draw near to God. And we can focus our attention on Him and on His ways. You know, in today's busy... Um, and distracting culture that we live in, entering into the fasting experience is actually like pushing the pause button on a hectic life and centering more on what Jesus has to offer. You know, this quiet and focused time allows you to hear the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. Accordingly, we can adjust and align the direction of our life. Because when we hear God, he will tell us in these times, they were not like last year or the year before, these times, he knows what's happening. He will speak to you, he'll direct you. Now, you might have heard some say, oh, I am fasting my friends, or I am fasting television, etc. Now, however, these people misunderstand what fasting is and what it isn't. The Hebrew word for fast means to cover the mouth, right? It means to cover the mouth. Then in the New Testament, the Greek word for fast means to abstain from food. So while we do need to get away from everyday distractions of our lives and, and take a break from TV and other things maybe, and because we want to spend time alone with God, right? And away from people. Uh, but fasting primarily is always about restricting food. It's about restricting food. So remember, fasting is a spiritual discipline, right? And it is done not so we can change God's mind, but rather to get quiet before him so we can hear what he is saying to us. You know, when we satisfy our flesh, with everything that demands, um, you know, the flesh demands, especially food, uh, we tend to drown out God's voice because we become very preoccupied with self-gratification. Now, during the fasting, we take charge of our flesh. 
we make it a servant to our spirit and then we are able to get in tune with the Holy Spirit and listen to what he is saying to us. Another thing I want to tell you about fasting is fasting is never to be done to show off our spirituality. Jesus was very clear on the subject. You see, when you fast, there is a way you have to fast. Let's read Matthew 6, verse 16. Matthew 6, 16. And when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do, who try to look pale and disheveled so people will admire them for their fasting. I assure you, that is the only reward they will ever get. So when you fast, don't toot your own horn, don't brag about what you are doing and how you are sacrificing something or so much for God. Let the Lord be your rewarder, not man. You see, my friend, fasting was designed by God not to change him, but rather to change us, right? Fasting is essential for some of you, especially those of you who are going through some tough times, you need to have a breakthrough. In some hard situations, you know, you need a breakthrough. Well, I want to tell you, fasting is essential. In Mark chapter 9, verses 17 to 27, um, Jesus' disciples, they went and tried to cast a demon uh, out of somebody and miserably failed. But then when Jesus came, he cast it out. Mark 9, 28 and 29 says this. Afterwards, when Jesus was alone in the house with his disciples, they asked him, why couldn't we cast out that evil spirit? Jesus replied, this kind can be cast out only by prayer and fasting. You see, only in the hard cases, when there is no answer, when there is no breakthrough in certain situations, that's when it says this kind. You know, you have a few this kinds, tough things. You prayed for a long time. There's no breakthrough. So what do we do? We talk about it, gossip about it, grumble about it, you know, and, and get all messed up about it. But it says this kind. You see, when there is a major marriage breakdown, a, a, a terrible habit, an unforgivable mistake, a child who really needs to have a breakthrough, you know, all those things. Mark 9, 29 says this kind can be cast out only by prayer and fasting. Listen, my friend, we don't fast for some big problem that is lurking beyond the horizon, but we fast for God's power that will be demonstrated beyond the horizon. So finally, I want to tell you, it is time to obey him. It is time to obey him. Over the last 30 years, more books have been written about marriage than in all the preceding 2,000 years of church history. But there are far more troubled marriages today than in any other era. You know, we have all the how-tos, but homes are still falling apart. There is a very simplistic saying that says the couple that prays together stays together. Now, I'm not trying to make this simplistic because there will be difficult moments in any union. But God's word is true when it says in Psalm 50, verse 15, Then call on me when you are in trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will give me glory. You know, the same holds true for parenting. We may own stacks of good books on child rearing and, and how to spend quality time with your children, etc. Those are good things. Yet we have more troubled teens today than at any previous time. This is not because we lack knowledge or the how-tos. It is because we have not cried out for the power and the grace of God. We have not gone to the throne of mercy and asked God to undertake and to intervene in the lives of our children, in the, in, in the lives of our marriages. You know, what if in the last 30 years, we had invested only half the time and half the energy in counseling, discussions, uh, attending seminars and uh, uh, reading books on the Christian family. And what if we put the other half into praying for our marriages and our children? 
Can you imagine what would have happened? I am certain we would be in a far better shape today. We would have far more success if we had taken a little bit of that time and we had gone to the Lord in prayer. That is why the writer to the Hebrews, he nails down the most central activity for all Christians. Hebrews 4.16 says, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Now, if you look, the, look at this, it doesn't say, let us come to the singing or let us come to the sermon. We have made the singing and the sermon the centerpiece of the church, something God never intended. I want to see people come to the throne of grace. That's talking about prayer. That's talking about being intimate with God, coming to him. That's the true source of grace and mercy. And that is through prayer, my friend. You know, I'm well aware that we don't get everything we ask for. A child who asks for a blade from an adult or a parent will not get it. But we have to ask according to God's will. But let us not use theological dodges to avoid the fact that we often go without things that God wants us to have. And he wants us to have it right now and today because we fail to ask. Too seldom do we get honest enough to admit Oh Lord, I can't handle this alone. I've just hit the wall for the 36th time. And Lord, I need you. I don't know where to go from here. You know, sometimes we don't have that kind of honesty. And God wants you to ask. To ask. You know, I, I, I said this many times. And because I, I love this. The great hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. You know, those lines that say, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. What needless pain. What needless pain. What peace we forfeit because we don't take it to God in prayer. I want you to bow your heads, close your eyes. I don't know what your struggle is, what your need is. But I know today God is going to meet needs. I know today healing virtue is going to flow. Even as you put your faith and trust in Him. It doesn't matter. To God nothing is too great. I want to take your left hand and put it on your heart. Raise your right hand to heaven. Close your eyes, bow your heads. And just start giving things that are not made for your shoulders. Your shoulders are weak. You're going to crash. But God's shoulders are strong. Start giving it to Him. You pray and I'm going to pray for you as you pray. Father, I bring my brother, my sister to you. I pray, Lord, that today as we have heard your word and we come to you, Lord, trusting your word, that even as we pray, we know you always do what your word says you will do. Lord, I pray for those who are sick in the name of Jesus, that healing virtue will flow through their bodies right now. Lord, take away pain right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, Lord, in Jesus' name, we stand on your word. We have no power, but you have all power. Father, I pray for those big burdens of finance, family issues, situations, Lord, where there is no breakthrough. I pray for those uh, the loads that people are carrying, that we will unload on you as you have asked us to. Lord, we give the problem to you. Give it to him right now. Where you are, keep your heads bowed. Give it to him. Say, Lord, here it is. Tell him what the problem is. Give it to him. You need to get it off of you. Give it to him. Lord, we give it to you right now. Because we know you will always come through. Father, release your people in Jesus' name. Right now, I pray that pain be released from bodies. I pray, Lord, that burdens be lifted. And people are set free in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you because we know right now you have touched and you have honored your word. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You know, as I close, I just want to tell you, God laid upon this thing upon my heart to pray and to come together for a 21-day solemn assembly, 3rd to 23rd May. So 
you can uh, follow the screen for instructions as where we are praying and, and what we are doing. But join us, even from your home, join us. Because we would like you to uh, pray together during this time. Some of those big things in your life, as we pray for the nation and our country and the church and everything else, we are going to pray that God will ha let you have a breakthrough in your life. So join us. Uh, 21 days we are going to pray. And we are going to believe God. It's a solemn time, you know. Try to put the everyday other things aside a bit, the way you can. And join us. We are going to fast. We are going to pray together. Now, if you would like to also join us for a live Zoom prayer meeting, right? I'm going to have a live Zoom prayer meeting with my other pastors. And if you would like to join, uh, it's going to be every Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesday, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, please join us, right? We'd be love to, uh, you know, be there live and, and pray for some of your needs and pray together with you. It's not just for needs. We're going to pray together on what God is telling and how we need to move. So it's going to be live. It's on Zoom. So you have to register. If You have to register to get on it. So please follow the instructions on the screen. One final thing. We have a gift for you. We have a free gift of a devotional booklet uh, that you can use during this solemn assembly. So today itself, if you will email or just follow again the instructions on the screen, and, and, and when you uh, follow that, we will electronically send it to you. Uh, so, so please do that, and you will have this 21-day booklet that's pr uh, prepared just for you, so you can use it and read it and be blessed and be strengthened, and God will help you during this time. May God bless you. Friends, you and I are blessed to hear such a wonderful word and to be a part of this season of what God is going to do through you and through me in this nation. I'd encourage you, just as Pastor Dishan has already shared with you, join in on the prayer times. Be a part of the body of Christ, reaching out to Christ through prayer in this season. I just have a couple of announcements that I would like to highlight to you. The first of which is we are going to take time to pray for our nation. Over the next three weeks, we are calling for a time of solemn assembly where every day we are going to take time to pray and seek God. Seek God for our nation. Seek God for everything that you and I are going through. And truly ask the Lord to break through in our nation at this time. To achieve this, we have put together a prayer booklet I'd like you to see the instructions on your screens right now. If you have the People's Church app, go over to resource materials. Under resource materials, you would see uh, Solemn Assembly devotional. And inside there, you will have what we need to focus on each day. The dates are mentioned, the scripture passages and the study is given. There's also a section where we can write our observations and applications and what the Lord has spoken to us, as well as our uh, prayer needs for the day. Uh, let's just use this time, you know, to really focus in on God. At the same time, if, if you're not used to all the technology that is being thrown at you these days, don't worry, we have you covered as well. Uh, just drop us an email at pastor at peopleschurch.lk and uh, we will send a PDF document across to you, one every week for the, uh, to look at the seven days that are ahead and to assist you in taking time to pray. We're not just doing the prayer booklet, but we're going to take time to gather together. Now, you could say, how do we gather together in times like these? We're going to be gathering on Zoom. You can see the details up on your screen as well. Pastor Dishan is taking a very special time of prayer on Tuesdays. And if you want to be a part of that, you need to register. You need to go to pcag.me slash prayer 2021. Let me repeat that again. pcag.me slash prayer 2021. And there is a form there with a couple of details requested. You just fill in your details there and you will get a link to the Zoom meeting that is taking place. For the rest of the days, I'd encourage all our People's Church believers, there is prayer happening with your regional pastors. Please get in touch with your regional pastors and see how you can join them in Zoom and other means uh, to join in and really seek God together every evening. I pray God will bless you as you go and I hope to see all of you 
at our prayer times throughout the week. God bless. Dear church family, we are so pleased to announce that in this season where the Lord is moving through His church, moving into your homes, through the online services and different ways which we can connect, He has opened another door for us to connect with you via the People's Church app. We encourage you to download it through the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store depending on your device. If you are looking for inspiring messages from the Lord, all our services, both past and present, are available. Our prayer times, the hour of hope, the youth services, special programs are all made available, including the sermon notes to help you truly grasp the truths of God's Word. They are available not just in video format, but in podcast form for you to be able to listen to wherever you are. The app will also assist you in connecting with us if you wish to find out more information about services, registering for services, committing to Christ, People's Church calendar events, as well as different activities of the church in addition to learning how you can get involved in a ministry of your choice. Also, with our app that comes packed with an online Bible, you have the opportunity to study God's Word further by accessing the library of Christian resource material in the membership area made available to you by Right Now Media, a collection for the adults, the youth, and children. Last but not least, the app allows you to be blessed by the life stories of people who worship at People's Church. Find out more information with regards to our social media accounts and the compassion arm of People's Church. We hope that this app will continue to bless you in your walk with Christ. May God bless you.